Hello. Um, yeah, so I will be presenting um, a small project that um, a friend and I have been working on uh, recently. Um, it's about it's an Android library that uh, that can be used to develop apps with the new um, Android Compose framework. So because it's an Android app, I will be showing some code, but I'm not you know, expecting you to have like advanced or expert knowledge of, of Android. It's just uh, my point here is just a bit to show what kind of problem Ramani Maps is solving. And, um, and you know, hopefully it could be uh, useful for you at some point to, if you want to write uh, a new app using uh, Android. Um, yeah. So this is the idea. We want to make an Android app. And we want to have a map showing on it, an interactive map, so that we can zoom in, zoom out, and move normally. And on top of that, we want to be able to add annotations to the map. For instance, on the, on the left-hand side, we have um, the, the red polyline, or this yellow circle that is user-draggable. And perhaps we can imagine um, more, like, slightly less trivial object um, on the right hand side that's um, an interactive polygon so the user can modify it it can it can be moved with the, the center handle and you can move the the handles on the, the borders the, the vertices to change the shape of the polygon so we could imagine using that to to define an area on the map depending on what we want to do um, and of course all of this is not really new right the, like maps have been doing that for a long time in all kinds of technologies. Um, so it's not that Ramani is uh, inventing anything. It's just like you, you can do that already with the map library, um, the map library, library right? Uh, so the question is, what is Ramani bringing on top of that? And for that, I would like to, to go a bit into the um, Android UI frameworks and explain how it works. So Android has evolved a bit uh, in the last few years. In the beginning, it was using Java as the default language, and that moved to Kotlin. And it had a different UI framework back then. It was, um, I call it the imperative XML. Uh, I realized a bit late that it's maybe not a really good name because XML is declarative. But uh, when I say imperative XML, I'm talking about the, the UI framework of Android. Um, so, and that XML framework that, that used to be now has been replaced by this new way that is called Jetpack Compose, and that's what I, I mentioned here as um, Declarative Compose. So let's have a look at how the, this XML old framework was working. The way it works in an Android app is that in this old way, you have to define the layout. So you define your UI layout using um, an XML file, that's a tree of objects that you want to, to show on the map, on the, um, on the app. And the, um, you have different objects that you can show, like a text would be uh, an XML element, a button would be that, you can have containers that, you know, like a column if you want to stack text or stuff like that. And you declare all of that in the XML. And in a simple app, um, that can almost define the whole app. And that would be a declarative way, uh, and that's pretty nice. And then if you have, for instance, a button, then you can have define a callback, and the framework generates for, for you some kind of functions that you can implement um, just to have the code that you want to execute when the, the user clicks the button. The thing is, if you have an app that's uh, getting a bit more complicated, sometimes you cannot define everything in the XML file. Um, and then at this point, you have to do more logic and start going into the, this UI layout from Java and, and edit it and all that. Um, and we'll see here how it works. Just before, just note that here we have the map library map view element. So you just say in your layout um, that you, know, you want to show a map somewhere there. And you can have some properties on it. Here we have an ID width and, and height of this, of this element. And then, because it's not like a trivial object, uh, in, in this XML framework, you have to, you cannot just access the map and start you know, adding annotations or stuff like that. You need to first get an object 
of the map that represents what would be created by the XML layout. But for that, you cannot just let the, the framework just generate the stuff for you because it will not give you access to this map. So here we see a few lines of code that are needed, and it's a bit like plumbering. Like what you have to do is uh, first you have to in initialize um, map library there. And then you need to have this weird inflator thing um, for this view that you use then to get a root view, and then from that root view that you have to set, so you basically inflate the XML that you wrote, so you, you kind of create yourself your uh, UI layout. And from that, since you created it, you have a reference to it, and you can get a map view object. And from that map view, map view object, you can start doing stuff like you know creating a circle, adding a polyline, and, and stuff like this. But you see there's some plumbering just like to create the, the app. And that's not all. I just added a few functions here. Like once now you have done that, you have to handle like the life cycle of the, uh, of the map, this element. There's a, there's a lot of things you have to do manually. Um, and with all of that, that's really just to set up a map. So you get something like this. Um, just, so it's, in, it's interactive, you can move it. That's what you would expect. But there was quite some setup involved to get there. And just to show how it looks with uh, Compose and Ramani, that's just that. It's basically just this one line, map libre, and you give it some properties. And just this will show you the, um, the, the interactive map. So I argue that it's much simpler. I guess we would all agree on that. Um, now the question is, I'm saying Compose plus Ramani. Is it Ramani that's helping, or is it just Compose? Like, what happens if you say I take the Map Library Android library and directly use it with Compose? Is Ramani really helping? So obviously, that's what I tried first before making Ramani, and it would look a bit like this. So we will try to use the Map Library API directly with Compose. So it starts a bit like this. The, the important part is those two lines at the bottom. Um, so we have to create some kind of map, but we will have some, some state stuff. Like as before, we had to handle the life cycle. Here we have to do that, but a bit the, like the compose way. And then the second thing is we have this code in scope. So that's also a bit of a red flag. Like in compose, you don't really, like in a, in a simple app, you don't really want to deal with coroutines directly in a, in the, um, like in, the, in the UI stuff, unless you do more complex stuff. And that's just the beginning. Then you have to, to use this Android view object, so that's kind of like a compatibility thing with um, non-compose elements, and that's where we put our map and stuff. So again, it's quite some, some code that's not completely trivial. And then that's not all, because in Compose, you don't want to have side effects in your elements, so you have to use this launch effect um, object, um, and then you can you can start doing stuff with your map in there. Um, and then you see here I added like um, creating a circle, so that's also the the normal map libre Android um, imperative API. So you just create um, circle annotation manager, and then you create options, and then you you can create your your circle. The thing is. All that is not really the Compose way. So you are making a new Android app with like the new technology, um, Kotlin and Compose, and and usually the map takes quite some space in the in the app, and and you have to do all of that in those non-Compose things. Like you will have to to do a lot of stuff in in the launch effect. If your app gets more complex, um, you will have to. Um, um, yeah, this element will grow, and that's not really the Compose way. So it's not super nice. I think the risk there is that you just get the worst of both worlds, like the, the XML and, and the Compose. So that's um, what Ramani is, uh, is solving, actually. It's, it's making this translation between um, between the, the Android, like the old way, the old API. So it takes the map library or map box API and, and it creates everything that's needed to use it in Compose. So in this example, um, that's the Compose way of doing it. So we still have this map library line that says, I want to have a map, but now we added a body to it and 
we have um, annotations in it. So we say inside of my map, I want to have a polygon, and I can give it vertices. I, have, I want to have a circle, polyline, whatever you want. And I think this is much easier to read, it's much easier to maintain, and that's really the Compose way, so it's consistent with the, the rest of the app. Um, of course, it's not a silver bullet, right? It's, uh, I'm showing it that, like here, it's super simple, but if you're, you start having like a more complex interactions with the, the map, then you will, of course, get like more complex code to write. But the fact is that it will still be like the consistent Compose experience. Um, and, and in my experience, that's, um, that is much nicer. The nice thing also is that we did not have to create you know, something from scratch. It's not a fork of the MapLibre Android API. It's not like a big project or anything like that. It's just a um, fairly small um, layer on top of the MapLibre um, library. And that's, that's pretty cool, I think. It's just uh, fairly small. Then it's also not completely trivial, like doing what we've been doing there. I think it requires understanding a bit like the the, the, how the Compose framework works, because doing all those translations, hand, handling the, the life cycle and all that is not trivial. And usually when you want to you know, make an app that uses a map, you don't want to learn all of that. So I believe it's, um, it's solving a real problem. We've seen that using the MapLibre API in a Compose app is not super nice. And it's solving a problem that is not you know, completely trivial to do. It's not like you would have 10 lines to write um, on, on your site. So I think it's, um, it's a nice compromise. And I wanted to, um, to end with like a more complex example of what we can do with it. That's, um, that's an interactive polygon, a bit like before, but this one is, uh, is a bit more complicated. The, the example here is uh, the typical kind of polygon that we would do to define a drone, a drone mission. If you want to fly a mission with a drone and you want to make a map out of that, typically you will want to have this kind of pattern which would be the, the white line. So you will fly above an area and take pictures at regular intervals and then the lines will have some spacing and the drone will just go you know, one line to the other and take pictures on the whole thing. And when you want to plan that, the user wants to be able to you know, define this area on the map. So that's typically what you want to do here. And the first example I had with this um, interactive polygon, it was just like four vertices and that was fixed. And here it's a bit more complex. We want to be able to make a complex shape. So every second handle, every, every second ver vertex of the polygon is, um, is a big handle. That's the one that you use to move the vertex. And the ones in between, you see when I click on it, I think soon, uh, it's, it's there to add a vertex to the polygon. So here it added one, and you can do the reverse. If you drag and drop um, a vertex on another one, then you get this orange circle, and if you drop it, then it will just remove it, like we have here. So it just allows the user to easily you know, add new vertices, remove vertices, change the, the size, uh, and then it's computing inside the like this path that we would want for a drone. And all that we did with Brahmani, so that's the thing I wanted to say, like it's not, it was not 10 lines of Compose, it's a bit more complex, we had to do some, you know, geometry, compute a bit the different, um, like how to make the lines, like the inter intersections and stuff. But still it was, um, in terms of like the Compose experience, it was, uh, it was very nice and, uh, and very consistent. So I think, um, yeah, that's the, the, that shows that it's, um, it's working quite well. Um, I'm, yeah, getting to the end now. I'm um, just hoping that, you know, it could be useful at some point. It is an open source library uh, with a license, um, Mozilla public license. So feel free to go check. We have a GitHub repository. And um, yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you, if you have questions. It's uh, still fairly new, so we will add new features. And if you have new features or want to contribute, then uh, yeah, that would be happily accepted. Um, thank you. So thanks a lot, Jonas. Uh, so questions from the audience? Let's go to 
that guy on the behind. Uh, what about performance? Did you check, like, uh, compare? Uh, imp hmm? Yeah, yeah. Did you profile it and com compare it with, uh, like, imperative uh, API? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think there are, like, a bit two questions there. There's a, how, how does Compose compare to uh, the XML framework? And then how, how does Ramani handle that? Um, so the first one, I think Compose is, uh, is quite good. It depends a bit um, on, on what you do. Sometimes it will be more efficient and sometimes less. Compose has this um, um, fairly advanced way of, you know, it's compiling the declaration you have and it has this way of knowing if it has to redraw an element or not. They call that a recomposition. So yeah, I think it depends. Like you can have like setups where Compose is slightly slower than um, than the XML way and and the other way around. Um, so I think usually it's not it's not really a problem. And then for Ramani itself, we've been checking that because if you start adding you know more vertices and moving it, and then you start adding those lines and all that, then it's it's a lot of annotations that we write. And we had some performance issues in the beginning because we were not you know it was not optimized. And then uh, we started looking into that, and I think it's uh, it's now um, fairly good. Um, we have not made you know exactly the same polygon in XML and compared how it is, but I know by experience that if you make you know a big um, polygon also in XML, I also had at some point um, some some performance issues. But that's really when you have huge polygons that we you know and and like thousands of lines. That's never something that we we want to use. Also, one thing I'd like to mention is those are animated GIFs, so it may look a bit laggy, but in the real app, it's super smooth. It's not, uh, it's not lagging like that. Does that answer your question? Let's see. So uh, I think uh, declaratively uh, writing Android apps is, uh, with Compose is probably the future of uh, Android development, right? So do you think that we should be recommending this approach in our documentation? That's a good question. Um, yes, I think, it's, um, I think it's definitely, I mean, it's the trend. It's not only Android. There's um, like React.js is declarative. Uh, Swift UI, the new iOS way is declarative. Flutter as well. So my feeling is that it will move there. Um, then in my experience, it's also a bit um, nicer to use than XML especially when the apps get a bit more complicated. And, and when we use maps, it quickly gets a bit more complicated. So I think, um, I think Compose is, uh, is pretty nice. Um, and yeah, I think it would be nice to, to mention it. Cool, let's, let's add, a, uh, add a link in the documentation to uh, Romani Maps then. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, yeah, thanks. <laughs> more questions there? <laughs> So both MapLibre and Mapbox exist also for iOS, and at the same time, there's a Compose multi-platform. Um, did you consider uh, making it multi-platform so that you can have this library and use it both on iOS and Android? That's again a, a good question. Uh, we thought about that. Um, not for iOS, uh, but uh, for the desktop one. We wanted to see if we could move that and, and make you know, the Kotlin app for desktop. Uh, the problem for desktop is that um, there's like the, the map library and map box renderers, um, the C++ ones, you need to have this, um, um, like the FFI to, um, to, to Java or Kotlin, you need to have an API between them, that. So it's, we reused it here because map library Android has it for Android, but there's nothing like that for Java on desktop. Uh, so I think that would be a bit, uh, that would be feasible, but there's an effort in doing that. And I did not try for iOS. I actually did not know that Mapbox was working on, uh, on iOS. Um, that, that's a good question. That's something that uh, I, I'd like to check, yeah. <laughs> Mapbox is uh, available on iOS and 
uh, Map Libre 2. It's uh, the Compose multi-platform yeah. you were talking about, probably. So that is an alpha right now. Currently, uh, multi uh, Compose multi-platform is uh, Android and desktop. Yeah. Uh, I think desktop is in beta, maybe. Ah, hi, so uh, I'm the maintainer of MapLibre Native, so maybe I can answer that. Uh, so the the Kotlin uh, slash Java uh, platform is really, really tied to Android. Uh, iOS, uh, the iOS platform is written on Objective-C, and um, yeah, so that, that doesn't apply uh, with uh, Compose multi-platform because I think it, it relies on Kotlin, right? So um, yeah, so what, what um, yeah, if you want to have a use Compose multi-platform, you need to uh, extract the parts of the, the. It's really tied to Android. That's what I'm saying right Yeah, now. yeah, but that's fine. But um, uh, it's it's Kotlin, it's fine, but it's just a lot of work to make it work. In Kotlin, Kotlin multi-platform, you define uh, platform-specific code. You yeah. can define platform-specific code. So there could be a Map Libre multi-platform, I think. Yes. What a uh, wrap. Yes. Uh, but it would uh, be a lot of work. <laughs> maybe. I think not that much. <laughs> it's just that on the on the Kotlin side, maybe not, but that's like the, the renderer is in C. And Kotlin multi platform does not handle C, right? So you have to get the this link. And I mean I looked really into Kotlin multi platform and for the um, like the the um, OpenGL rendering or like the graphic re rendering. You cannot translate that directly to between Android to like a desktop, so you would have to re-implement it like the graphical one, like the this layer. So that's a different component, and once you have that, then you can you could reuse that code here. But the thing is that that code here is using the MapLibre Android API, and that one does not work on on desktop. So you would have first to do that, and then I think it would work. But as uh, as he said, I think it's a uh, it's not a trivial task to do. Um, I started looking into it, but it's it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said if it is easy, just make a pull request. That's welcome. <laughs> but really, yeah, I started. I put a, you know a couple hours into that. I uh, started seeing a bit of direction for that, but uh, I think it will be a uh, yes some effort. But I I'd love to have that. Yeah. Interesting discussion. <laughs> uh, moving to the next question. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. And the library looks super cool. Um, it reminds me a lot of Svelte Map Libre uh, for the web, which I've been using a bunch lately. Um, kind of has like the similar declarative API of uh, like objects on the map nested underneath uh, the main, yeah, underneath like the map component. Um, I wanted to ask: is the uh, is the API like I think one of your examples had like a polyline and then a color directly on the polyline object? Do you have like a different component for GeoJSON sources and then like layers underneath that? Um, Kind of following the Map Libre API or not? Um, currently, we have so what we needed basically. So we have polyline, line, polygons, markers, um, and I think that's it. And I I've never used actually what what you described with the I've seen some GeoJSON in the code base, but I've never used like more complex stuff like that. Um, but there's no reason why we could not use all of that. It's really like. We just have to implement it on um, on it. So, yeah, if you want to have that, please open an issue like a feature request, and we can we can talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Cool. So, we still have like um, three minutes for more questions. If you guys think about more questions. Okay. Then I just got curious about the name Ramani. What's the origin of it? It uh, sounds like some Hindu name, but uh, I'm not sure. So yeah, the, the my friend is uh he comes from Tanzania, and okay. uh, in Swahili it means maps. Ah, in Swahili, <laughs> so, oh interesting, very 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 interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's just that uh, uh, I think Ramani was not that clear. We wanted to have the the domain, and also there was like other projects called Ramani. That we are not really necessarily related to maps or like not OpenStreetMap, so we thought, and also not everyone knows that Ramani means maps, so we thought that Ramani maps was nice. That's pretty nice, pretty interesting, nice. So okay, uh, applauses again for the presenter. Thank you.